The closure of church buildings over Easter was something that made the national press. It was interesting to read letters from members of the public in the secular papers, expressing disappointment that despite the law making provision for religious leaders to travel to their places of worship for the purpose of broadcasting services, the Church of England made the decision to go one step further and prevent this from taking place. The letters expressed sadness that church buildings could not be brought to people's homes over the Easter period and that it made the church seem that it was shutting up shop and abandoning the nation. The archbishops tried to explain why the church had come to this decision, that church leaders needed to set an example, and after all, the church was not the building, but the people. Well, of course, they are right, but yet there is a big part of me that still feels a bit uneasy about all this online worship, or at least pretending that it is just the same as worshipping in a church building. Because it's not. One of the hallmarks of Anglo-Catholic worship is the way in which the senses that we possess can all be engaged. Through a cis screen, we may get sight and sound, but we do not taste the body and blood of Christ. We do not smell the incense. We do not get the experience of having sound surrounding us, and we do not touch. We do not touch the sacrament. We do not feel the water in the font when we come into the building. We do not feel our way around the building and perhaps most importantly, we do not touch each other. Touch can be both a positive and a negative sensation. Touch that is inappropriate or unwanted can leave us feeling violated or hurt. But the touch of others is also something we crave whether it's a shaken hand at the piece, a gentle touch to the elbow, an arm around a a shoulder, or a hug when we need it most. Those of us who live with others may well still be able to feel human contact, but those of us who live alone, this human touch may be something that we desperately miss. And it is still a vital part of our worship that cannot be replicated over a screen. Jesus does not shy away from touch. Rather, he uses it time and time again to impart teaching or blessing. The man born blind feels the touch of Jesus as he rubs mud onto his eyes and allows him to see. The woman bleeding touches the hem of Jesus' robe. Jesus reaches out and touches the leper and he is made clean. And when Jesus raises the little girl from the dead, he takes her by the hand and gets her up. This sense of physical touch is important. For those who cannot see or hear, they can still use touch to navigate the world. And the physical sense of touch reminds us that our faith is not something that lives in some kind of spiritual realm, but is something that is real and embodied and can be felt. Our Gospel reading today focuses strongly on the sense of touch. Thomas's doubt in the resurrection of Christ places him outside of the new Christian community. He does not gather with the disciples in secret, and he is not there when Jesus first appears to them and breathes on them the Holy Spirit. When the other disciples tell him that they have seen Jesus, Thomas is having none of it. Seeing for him is not believing. It's just not enough. For Thomas, touch is what he needs and touch is what he gets. The next time Jesus appears with the disciples, Thomas is with them. And Jesus invites Thomas to put his hands in Jesus' side and Thomas confesses his faith. My Lord and my God. And that brings him back into the Christian community. We are devoid of touch in our worship at the moment, but we can try and find other ways to engage that sense in our prayers. When we pray the rosary, we can feel the roundness of the beads to help us pray. You may have a crucifix at home. You can feel the shape of the cross 
or run your hands over the corpus and feel the body of Christ upon it. Pick up your Bible, feel the weight of the book, the smoothness of the pages. These, of course, are not the same as human touch, but they engage that sense nonetheless that can ensure that our worship at home is more than just people on a screen or words on a page. It's a challenge to worship when we may feel devoid of many of the things that bring Christ present for us, not just in spirit, but in physical presence. As we become more aware of different ways in which we can pray, we are invited, like Thomas, to reach out and touch Christ, perhaps in new ways that we didn't know before. To reach out, to touch, to feel and to see, and to say, my Lord and my God.